welcome one and all to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartuk-34. Last time, our party was finally convinced to leave the city of Phoenix despite having to trust Johan the Lone Shark. Arrangements were made to smuggle the group out via a swine cart and down to the docks. Dingus presented Karina to the party and asked if they would take her with them. She had been the one to orchestrate their escape and was also in danger from the guards as well. The party learned that the waif had been an orphan and seemed quite capable. We rejoined the party as they are awakened to begin their escape. Cabe felt the gentle hand of Dingus rouse him from his slumber. Blinking in the dim light, he gathered his wits quickly and rose from the cot. Across the room he spied Karina with his back to him getting dressed. As she tossed a shirt on, he noticed a strange tattoo that consumed most of her back. He dismissed the vision as the high bishop handed him some old clothes to wear. Giving over his belongings to the priest, he observed as their possessions were tossed into a dirty sack. Lady Arena's noses wrinkled and pointed out that the sackcloth that she was adorned in only smelled slightly better than the sewers. The others agreed and headed to the door. Sister Elaine turned around and observed Dingus give Karina a big hug and wipe away a tear from her cheek before she moved towards the door as well. Are you okay? asked the priestess, but received only a grunt in response as the waif went through the door behind the others. The faint light of dawn fell over the courtyard as two sleepy acolytes stood watch at the gates. The high bishop moved to the men and relieved them, allowing them a break. For several minutes, the holy man waited anxiously as for the wagon to appear. As the party waited nervously, they saw the high bishop spot something and heard the shriek of pigs approaching as wheels clacked on the cobblestones. The wagon pulled up to the main gate and a farmer spoke with the head of the church, who waved quickly to the group. A small gate on the side was just large enough for Fargus to squeeze in as the group situated themselves on top of each other in the center of the wagon. Nearly ten pigs surrounded them and the smell was awful, but Karina did not seem to notice. As the wagon lurched forward, one pig landed on Lady Irena, who shrieked loudly. A terse look from the others caused her to bite down on her finger until Fargus could kick the pig off the mage. Several minutes passed as the creaking wagon made its way through the winding street to the main gate that the group had passed through days before. Even over the squealing of the pigs, the party could hear guards yell out for the wagon to halt. Angry swine made their opinion known of the rapid stop, but quieted down quickly, allowing the party to hear the discourse between the farmer and the guards. In between the straw bedding and the legs of the animals, the group could see several guards stalking around the wagon to inspect the contents. At one point, a sharp spear tip entered the wagon between two large sow. The point was within inches of Karina's face as the others looked on in horror while she remained calm. A sharp rebuke from the farmer had the guard remove the spear quickly and the wave shrugged it off, remaining silently. The group heard one guard yell at the farmer to remove the stinking wagon and once again it lurched forward. The group caught a glimpse of the city gates between the legs of one sow just as it defecated in the straw and they felt the vehicle move down the sharp incline towards the docks. The time spent in the wagon was long enough that the smell was only mildly distasteful but enough for the group to become filthy. Several more minutes down the bumpy, muddy road found the wagon come to a stop and the farmer yell for his mules to heal. Jostling around, the farmer stepped forward and opened the gate to the covered wagon and the group tumbled out trying to wipe the stench from their clothes to no avail. The farmer grabbed two soiled bags and threw them at Fargus who nearly dropped them. They recognized the bags as holding their belongings and began to move towards a ship with the nameplate, The Venture but stopped as the farmer yelled at them. Doi! Don't forget your friends! 
yelled the old man as he moved a ramp in front of the gate, causing a rush of swine down the incline. The farmer used a flexible shaft and swatted the lead animal in the hindquarters, causing it to veer towards the gangplank of the boat. The herd followed the boar and promptly knocked the soiled pieces into the mud and water lapping at the shoreline. A rough guffaw was let out by the farmer as the herd of pigs quickly ran up the gangplank where they were trying to be cornered by sailors. The farmer climbed back into his wagon as the very dirty group got back on their feet covered in mud and debris. Which one of you is the priestess? barked the farmer. Flipping mud off her hands, Sister Elaine scowled and raised her hand. The man pointed out that this is breakable and tossed a small leather purse into the air which wasn't far enough to reach the cleric. She dove but fell short of the purse which was still sailing through the air. In front of her rolled a very dirty Karina who made a successful catch on the bag as the mules pulled the wagon away. The waif handed the cleric the bag and got back up, still soiled, and headed to the gangplank. Sister Elaine opened the bag and discovered six slender vials containing potions of healing with a note. Opening the parchment, she discovered only a few words scrawled on the paper. I'm sorry and good luck. She tucked the note back into the bag and followed the others up the gangplank. On board the ship, the crew was still busy chasing down the pigs and a woman with a large hat approached them. I am told that you are going to the channel and that you aren't going to be my problem anymore. Fargus dropped their bags and nodded in the affirmative. The female captain called out to Bolger several times before a fat gnome waddled up to her apologizing for his delay. The captain ordered the man to show the group their quarters and tossed their current clothes before telling the party that she only had one small room for them to change. You have two hours. Stay out of sight, she warned the group. Bulger told them to come with him and he zigzagged through the pig collective and showed the party to a small room where they could change and hide out. After he left the group, they looked at each other and Lady Irena announced, Turn around to Fargus and Cabe so they could change. Nothing I haven't seen before, muttered Fargus, but was quickly silenced by the glares of Irena and Elaine. An unabashed Karina immediately stripped naked and dug through the bags to find her items. The sight caused Cabe and Fargus to flush red and do a quick about face against the wall as they discovered the waif was not a girl but a young woman that had been hiding her attributes well. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at the Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.